Okay. Good morning to you, and we're thankful for the ones that will listen by the way of internet. And it's always a good morning to be able to come and study and understand some things about comfort. And all of us, we need comfort. We have to have it. That's just part of life, and that's the Word of God's given us comfort. And I'm so thankful for that. Uh, there's so many people out here today that are in the world that are lacking and they're hurting and there's all kinds of needs in the world. There's always somebody out there worse than what I am or you are, but on the other hand we still hurt and we still go through things and we feel pressures and we feel the things of the world, and, but then this container that we're in, it acts up and when it acts up, it kind of leads us to uh, down and out a lot of times, but what I want to say to you today is that there's comfort in the Bible. And that's what I put on in, on the board. And I want to do this one here. We're at verse 18, chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 18. This will end this chapter. And we'll go into chapter 5 next week. And I know we've spent a lot of time in these verses, but there's a lot here that I, I didn't even begin to really to cover like I should. Verse 18, Paul says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today for your grace, your love to us, and we're thankful that you give us a complete Bible that we can trust and re live by and rely upon and get comfort from it. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. You know, you look at that comfort in times like we face today. Now, I've and I'm not leaving out the health issues. You, you think about comfort in times like we face today. We've got difficult times in front of us today. They're not easy. Whether it be health insurance or whatever it is, taxes or whatever you name it, there's, there's difficult times that we face. And uh, the comfort in the, in the Scriptures gives all believers the capacity to, to deal with life. That's the only way you're going to deal with it. You cannot deal with your problems if you just walk in that flesh, body, soul, and spirit. But you've got to go spirit, soul, and body through the Word of God and deal with life and let the Word of God give us that comfort. And you know, what kind of times do we face? Well, you think about a lost person, I won't go to it, Ephesians 2, they're dead in their trespasses and sins, they're walking according to the course of this world, prince of power of the air. I mean, you think about a lost person, what kind of condition they're in. They're dead, they're lost, they're on the way to eternal hell, uh, and, but we have the answer. We, we can solve their, pro their problem if we give out the Word. If we, and you'll say, well, I, I don't know how to give it out. Well, I'm going to tell you this. If you build up that doctrine in your inner man, you're going to have to give it out. And that's, that's me. The more you build up, you're going to have to give it out to somebody. And there, there's people... Uh, that need, the, the world's out here and there's many people that need to be saved they all need to be but not all will be but upon all it's what the, the Lord Jesus Christ died on that cross of Calvary upon all and for all them that believe you think about the ones that believe get eternal life the ones that reject him die and go to eternal hell so we need to give out the good news the gospel for what Christ has done for us but you can go on and on about a lost person well what about us in this time we're living in. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. And uh, comfort in times like we face today. Well, what are we facing today? A lot of, a lot of people, they think the world's going to get better. And, you know, everybody's going to believe, it, believe what we teach and all that. It's not that way. You know, it, it sound doctrine. Man doesn't want sound doctrine. They want everything but sound doctrine. But you've got 1 Timothy chapter 4 there in verse 1. Get over there. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, expressly in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. Now we've got the latter times there. You think about the general condition that will exist in the body of Christ in the last days. You think about that, the doctrines of devils. You think about preachers. A uh, family or two, a couple comes to a pastor in the local church assembly there and wants him to marry them, and he says no because they've been married. 
and then turn right around and allow that person maybe to teach and do this and do that. Now what's that give you? That's doctrines of devils. Is all that amounts to. I mean, I believe this. I believe if two people come, they're saved, they love the Lord, they want to get married, you know, they're in the assembly here. If, a, if they're good enough to be in the assembly, they're good enough for me to do the ceremony. And, and uh, you know, you think about things like that. Doctrines of devils, refusing to marry, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. There it is in verse 3 there. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. I knew another man a few years ago, he refused to go to the Walmart. But you know what he'd do? He'd send somebody else to Walmart to get something for him. <laughs> now what do you got there? I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, you think about that. Uh, you, you can't have it all and, and be straight. I drew, I drew a straight line this morning about the righteousness of God. That line, as straight as I could draw it, but he, God's straight. His righteousness, he's always right, man's always wrong. I drew another line, man going down. Man, there's none righteous, there's none good, there's none seeking after God. And you think about the condition man's in. I mean, don't figure out, it don't take you long to figure out God's word, God's right, His word's right. Uh, only if we just read it and believe what we read, it, it makes a big difference in our lives. But you've got latter times there. Turn on over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I mean, it, it gets worse. You've got 2 Timothy chapter 3. I won't spend a lot of time on this. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. You know, what kind of time do we live in today? Well, Paul says this, and also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Well, if they're perilous, they're dangerous times. And that's what we're in those last days. It's perilous, it's dangerous. You know, believers can be swept off their feet. Well, I mean, it doesn't take much. And you know as well as I do, everybody that's out there preaching is not correct on everything. Amen. And you know, also there's people that they use the word grace, and just because they use grace doesn't mean they're grace preachers. Right. So I want you to understand it's a dangerous time. And doctrine is very important. If you, if you get swept off your feet with the doctrine wise, what do you have left? You can't function as a saved person. You're just like you're dead, and you're not going to be able to do anything with, with your life. So, you know, looking at all that and going back and reading this verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 there, in verse 18, Paul says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. And you think about comfort there. Uh, that word is uh, a good example of this, the 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Talking about comfort. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Well, who, who gives the comfort? Well, 2 Corinthians 1, 3. He says, Who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort of which we ourselves are com comforted of God. Who gives the comfort? God does. How does He give it? He gives it to His Word. God will give you comfort. So, you think about the word comfort, we've looked at before, come, it's, it's with, you put the fort there, and that, that fort is strength. And you know, the Indians... The cowboys built a fort. The army would to protect themselves from the Indians. And they had strength by doing that. Well, that's what fort, the fort is comfort. It's with strength. The Word of God gives you strength in your inner man to be able to stand and be able to do and go forward in this present evil world. Uh, the question is, in verse 18, why did these believers need comfort? Well, uh, you know, we all need it. But in verse 13, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. See, there's loved ones that have died and gone on to be of the Lord. They're asleep. Their bodies are. So why do they, they need comfort? Because they've lost loved ones. They've died. And I'm going to tell you, it's a sad heart when you lose a loved one. And if you've never lost one, I, I hope you don't lose one, but most likely you will if you live. You're going to lose loved ones. And you have a sad heart when you lose one. And I'm going to tell you the way your spirit, soul, and body is made up, your body's got emotions. Your soul has emotions. 
And you know, even at the best, you can build up the doctrine in you, the message, the house of doctrine, have that in, in your inner man. But whenever you lose a loved one, you're going to have emotions. That flesh is, is going to give, show emotions, and you're going to get choked up, and you're going to think, hey, I can't catch my breath, or I can't swallow. Now, if you ever get like that, that's not a pleasant time situation to be in. But people go through things like that, and it's sad when they suffer. It's sad when they lose loved ones. But you'll find in verse 13 there, even as others which have no hope, you know, we have hope. We have that blessed hope in front of us, the Word of God. And we have the hope. We're not like some that have no hope. And we, we can rejoice in that. We have hope. And you know, that's comfort. Like, for example, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's hope there. That's a sure thing right there. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you, you think about that. And also, chapter 5, verse 10, Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. That's hope. And you think about what we have in Him. Uh, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. <laughs> now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, comma, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Charlie and I discussed this passage of Scripture yesterday. You notice there, which hath loved us? Well, that is past, but it's also present. It's going all the way through. I mean, you think about the ages to come. He's loved us. So look at it that way when you read that verse. Who hath loved us. And notice that there. And hath given us everlasting consolation. I mean, it's the same thing. It's going right on through. He's giving you everlasting consolation. And no setting, and good hope through grace. You know that good hope, that's going to be realized at the rapture. Amen. Whenever the Lord comes, if it's today, and we hear the shout, and we go up. Amen. That's that hope. So if you look at those three things, that's a good verse there. And there's, there's verbs, tenses there, and all that you need to learn, and I need to learn more about that myself. But looking at it, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation, and what else has given us? Good hope, how? Through grace. You're saved with grace, you live with grace, and that good hope we have is through grace. Not by works. It's not based on what we do, but what the Lord did for us on the cross of Calvary. Uh, also, look at verse 17 there. He says, Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Comfort your hearts. That, that heart, so that's your inner man. And establish you in every good word and work. I mean, that, there, there's the comfort. That brings comfort to your hearts. That brings stability to us. If you get comfort in your heart, if you get stability, you're stable. And you think about that. You think about somebody losing a loved one. The only way that you're going to get comfort is through the Word of God. And if you rather divide the Word and read it rightly divided, you're going to get stability about that. And that's, that's what the, the comfort does. It brings stability in their lives. You know, that word comfort there is connected with that hope that God's given us through grace. I mean, the comfort and the hope, it's all connected together. You can't uh, do it without the other. And going back now to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 18, Paul says, We're for comfort one another with these words. What does comfort give us as a believer? Well, the comfort gives us as a believer to be able to deal with life. You know, you lose a loved one, and if you don't watch, you'll go into depression. And if you go into depression, you're not able to deal with life. It'd be, it'd be the same thing being in the military and you see in a battle and you go through things. And if you don't get comfort from the Word of God, then you're not going to be able to deal with life very well. So you think about all that. I mean, it, that's important there for us to be able to deal with life. 
You know, you, you see all kinds of reactions over death. Uh, like I said, there's nothing wrong with crying over a loved one that's passed on. But if they're saved, they're, in, they're already in the throne room of God. They're already far better than we are. We're still struggling with this container that we're in. We're still struggling, battling with this war, the war we're faced with, principalities and powers, this ungodly world, Satan. So we, we have a lot on our platter. And that's why you've got to stay in the Word of God and renew your mind in the Word of God. So the capacity to deal with life and how does that happen? Well, we put, you've got to put strength in your inner man. It's got to go inside you. A lot of people, they think it's all outward, but it's not. It's inward. You put that strength in your in, in, inner man there. Uh, we, know, we know how to deal with eternity. How do we deal with it? Well, we've done heard the cross, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, Christ died for our sins. And I believe that. And the moment I believe that, I was justified freely. So that means that I was declared righteous. So I've got the righteousness of God because of the blood that was shed on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. So I'm saved. So I can look out there in the future and I can, I can get comfort from the Scriptures knowing hey, that I've got comfort uh, and I've, I've got hope. You know, Bible hope is steadfast. It's sure. It's not just a maybe a hope so type thing. It's, it's with confidence. And he said there in 1 Thessalonians 4.18, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. You got the words there, plural. And you think about what Paul writes here, and there's comfort right here in this chapter. There's comfort in this letter that he writes to the Thessalonians. And there's comfort now. We have a complete Bible now, Genesis to Revelation, and we know that what's to us is Romans 6 Philemon. We know when we have issues, we go for comfort through the Word of God. We go to Romans 6, 5, He's our spokesperson, Paul is. Well, thinking about that, you think about what Psalm 12, 6 says, the words of the Lord are pure words. You can read that for yourself. Psalm 12, 6. What we've got, we've got a Bible that's pure. The words are pure. They're not contaminated. They're not corrupt. We don't have a corrupt text. We have the Word of God. It's alive and well. And it's, it's a Bible that we can trust, that we can rely upon, depend upon, and know without a doubt I'm going to be strengthened no matter what situation I go through, no matter the difficult times we're, we face now or what we'll face next week, I'm going to be able to go through them with the Word of God by reading, by believing what I read, by studying it out, renewing my mind in the Word of God, being obedient to what the Word of God, Word of God says. I'll give you an example. Turn to Romans 15. Romans 15. You know, does everybody agree context determines meaning? And I think a lot of times in Romans 15, uh, and I, there's no think I know, a lot of times we don't use this verse correctly in Romans 15, 4. Because there's context here in, in Romans and I'm going to try to share this with you here. Uh, you'll find in Romans 15, 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Well, what's intent and purpose of that? That we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. You know, most of the time you, you go back and refer back to time past and all that. And that's okay if, it, you, know, if you want to do that, but I believe there's more to it than that. Because... Do I go to time past to get comfort, patience and comfort of the Scriptures? Uh, might have hope. Do I go there? I don't. <coughs> That's right. We don't go there, do we, Brother Charles? So I'm saying context determines meaning. It's okay what's written a four times for our learning. We know time passes for our learning. But also, looking at this here, learning is the act or experience of one that learns. I mean, it's after or experience of one that learns. Bible learning is heart learning. If you want to learn, you gain it from the Bible and you put it in your inner man. Like Romans 6, 17. I read this verse maybe a couple weeks ago or maybe last week, but I want you to let this verse sink down in your mind and go to your inner man. Romans 6, 17. 
Paul says, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. Now, that's, that's who we were for we were saved. But you have obeyed from the heart. Another set. You, to obey from the heart, you believe a message that, that uh, requires no outward activity at all. You believe. Whenever you believe from the heart, you obey from the heart, you believe that God, the message that you was given, that message is that Christ died for our sins. He is buried and raised again. And you obey from the heart, no set form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. That's doctrine. And I told you last week, the week before, people say they don't have, like doctrine. Well, you ought to tell them you had to have doctrine to be saved. And after you're saved, you've got to live a doctrine. And you've got to follow what the Word of God says. But I'm just, I, I'm talking about there, you, you think about learning uh, something because you've trusted it. Uh, here, I'll give you another example. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. Philippians 4 and 9. Paul says, Those things which you have both learned, see the word learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me. Notice that. Do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Well, what is that? That's the doctrine. You see in Paul. He's the one who gives the doctrine out. That, that's the teaching. Notice there in verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. See the word learn? In whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I have learned. How did Paul do that? I, he said, whatever, now that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned whatever, whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. How did Paul do that? Well, he made adjustments in his inner man in relationship to the truth that he knows. Every, you know, when he'd go through these situations, he'd make adjustments in his inner man and he'd go to the verse and say, this is the verse, this is the one that I, that I need and you give me comfort, give me strength in my inner man. But you, the things you've learned, it's very important you see that. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. How can, I, how can I do all things through Christ? How? Through Christ which strengthens me. It's, it's through Him. It's through Christ. And how are we strengthened through Christ? The Word of God. We, need, we get the strength from God's Word. You know, it's a sad thing to see the time we live in, this difficult time that we face. Not only do we have issues, lost people, there's a lot of lost people in this world all over. But also there's saved people that, that don't know the truth and also not willing to come to the knowledge of the truth. And therefore, they're walking in the flesh. And that's not good at all for anybody as far as saved. And then you've got some that just save people that just actually have given up. They've been trapped in a snare or a trap. And they can't get out for whatever reason and won't get out. And they, they, now they've gone back and they act like a lost person. But they're saved. And you know, that does nothing but hurt the body of Christ. That's all it does. Either one, walking in the flesh or walking like a lost person. Ephesians 4, I won't spend a lot of time, but I, turn over there. Ephesians 4, 17. You know, we don't need to walk like other Gentiles walk. I encourage you today, that's why... I, I encourage you to read your Bible every day. If you don't read, well, guess how you're walking? You're walking in the flesh. And you know, regardless. And you know, that line, uh, you know, you think about the line, I can't draw a straight line, but this is God here. He's always right. And you look down here, this is man. He's always wrong. All the time. And you think about us, how wrong we are if we neglect this book here. If we don't renew our mind and get the comfort in the Word of God that God wants to give us. He's the God of all comfort. We read that in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3. And if we don't get that comfort, then you think about how you, you walk. You think walking about that body, soul, and spirit, flesh-wise. But if you read the Word of God and believe what you read, 
Study it right, divide it, renew your mind. Walk in, in the spirit, soul, and body. It's, it's a lot more beneficial to all of us if, if we do that. But Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, Paul says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Well, how did the other Gentiles walk? Well, you've got to draw your timeline. Go back to Genesis 11, you'll find out what, how they walk. God gave them up. So that we don't need to walk that way. You find, it talks about verse 17, in the vanity of their mind. Vanity means it's empty. They've got an empty mind. They don't want any truth in it. Now, that tells me people that say that I don't want any doctrine, they've got an empty mind too. Right or wrong. Y'all agree with that? And that, that's what leads to carnality. That's what leads to walking in that flesh and all that. That leads to even to reversion. They'll even quit and give up on, on their life as far as living for the Lord. So you've got all that to deal with there. You know, whenever you've got vanity, your mind's empty, that leaves a place in there for vacuum. And you know what the world's going to do? It's going to allow you to suck all the things of the world up into that mind. All the bad habits, all the wrongdoings, it just sucks it up in your inner man, in your mind. I mean, you think about that. If you leave the Word of God out and you don't read the Word of God and renew your mind and you, you allow all that, you allow your mind just to be empty. There's nothing. You don't want any doctrine. You don't want the teaching. You don't want to learn. Then the world's going to suck that up in you. And, and, that's, and you're going to walk that way. You know, lost man walks that way. He's empty. He's got an empty mind. The same person that refuses a doctrine walks that way as well. Verse 18 says, And having the understanding dark and being alienated in the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Talking about these Gentiles. The blindness of their heart. They didn't, their heart was dark. They didn't have any doctrine in their, in their inner man. And that's the way they were over in Genesis chapter 11. And also, verse 19, who, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Notice that giving themselves over. What they're doing, they're betraying themselves. Giving themselves over. They betray themselves. They deceive themselves. And they just give themselves over. Can you imagine that? Giving themselves over into lasciviousness. Can you imagine a soldier is in a war and he just all of a sudden he just gives himself to the, in the hands of the enemy. But he betrays himself. Betrays the, the, the people that he's with. The men that he's around with and supports. And so that's the way, you know, even saved people, they betray themselves. They walk like Gentiles. And, and that's sad when you see that. Verse 20, 20 there, but you have not so learned Christ. See, they didn't, they didn't learn that from Christ. If so be that you have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus. You know, the truth is in Jesus. Is Jesus here today? The answer is no, He's not, but His Word is here. And that's the truth in Him. And we have the truth in our hands in the King James Bible, and that's why we rightly divide the Word of Truth we divide truth from truth. There's no error in it. You just need to divide it. And uh, that's what we try to do. So, you, you think about learning. Go back to Romans 15 and verse 4. Romans 15 and verse 4. Paul said to comfort one another with these words. That's 1 Thessalonians 4.18. Romans 15.4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, and that word that means intent and purpose. What's intent and purpose? That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And notice that there, uh, if it's written for our learning, verse 5, now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. Notice that now the God of patience and consolation grant you. How's he going to do that? How is he going to do verse 5? Now the God of patience and consolation grants you to be like-minded one toward another according, according to Christ Jesus. How is he going to do it? He's going to do it with the Scriptures in verse 4. You see that? You've got to go back to the Scriptures. And verse 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, going back, we know it's going back. 
regardless if it's time passed, regardless of that, there's also a foretime here in Paul's letters in Romans. Uh, you look at Romans 15.1. This is before Romans 15.4. This is a foretime. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Now Paul's writing and he's telling us here we ought to, uh, if you're strong, if you've got the doctrine built up in your inner man and you're strong in the Lord, you ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. That's a weak brother. Brethren, how do we know that? Well, look at chapter 14, verse 1. Context determines meaning. Whatever, what sort of things are written before time are written for our learning. So we learn from this. you got Romans 14, 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. You've got the weak brethren. They're weak in the faith. They don't have that house of doctrine built up in their inner man like they should. And so they're weak. And that's why uh, the four time there, I just want to share that with you. Uh, uh, Romans 15 once before Romans 15 4. And that, I know he's talking about the weak bread. And like I said, if you want to go back, uh, you can go back, but I, I'm just saying that's another point that you can look at there. Verse 3, Romans 15 3, for even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of men that reproached thee fell on me. Christ didn't please himself. You think about that. It said there in verse 3, for even Christ pleased not himself. So it written, the reproach of that reproach they fell on me. He didn't please himself. You know, you think about pleasing your neighbor in verse 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. You please your neighbor for his good to what? Edification. And that's building up. If you don't build up, you tear down. So there, there you have that. And it's important that we build up people. Uh, you, you look at verse 3 there, please his neighbor. There was no self-pleasing. No self-interest. No self-seeking in Christ. Christ made others the issue. You read Philippians 2, and it tells you all about that. Christ made others the issue. You know, that's why we should let the Word of Christ teach us. To think like the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how, how should we think? Well, look at 15.4 there. Romans 15.4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So you read aforetime. You read Romans 4. 14. You find out about the weak bread. You find out in, in 15.1 there about the, if you're strong, you ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. You learn all that. That's for our learning there. Well, then what you learn now, what do you do with it? Well, look at the next one in verse 4 there. Uh, for whatsoever things are written before time are written for our learning, what's the intent and purpose that we through patience. Notice that that's the next thing. Learning leads to patience. You learn and you understand that there's weak brethren out there. You understand that not everybody's walking in the Spirit. That there's many that don't walk in the Spirit, they're walking in the flesh. So you learn that. You understand that not everybody knows how to write and divide the Bible. And by understanding that, then what you do, you, you, you work go with patience. You're patient towards people like that. And what, what does patience lead to? Well, if, you, if you're learning and you've got patience, it leads to comfort. See that? And that's the comfort of the Scriptures. You think about being able to comfort and, and help. Well, what does comfort lead to? Well, it leads to hope. See how all three of those go together? You got you learn, you've got there's patience comes out of it, there's comfort of the scriptures, and then there's that hope. It's steadfast, it's sure. And I hope that you see that. Verse 3, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproach of them that approached thee fell on me. Notice that that's in 15.3, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproach of them that approached thee fell on me. On me. And then verse 14 there, or verse 4, I'm sorry. I need to go to Romans 5, that'd help. Go to Romans chapter 5. My eyes and my glasses is not the best today. Focus is not good. Medication. Medication will do it to you. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Paul says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Now, 
if you were looking for a definition of glory, look at that next right verse prior to that. By whom also we have access by faith in this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. See, if you, you know, you think about, but we glory in tribulation. We rejoice in tribulation. How can you do that? Because that inner man peace, that doctrine in your inner man. That's how you can do that. Instead of just throwing up your hands and getting frustrated and ready to give up, put the doctrine in you and keep on going. This container is only going to last a little while that I'm in. If it keeps going downhill like it is, it won't last too long. But it's what it is. And the fretting and all that doesn't help a bit for me. I just need to stay in the Word and read and be strong, walk in the Spirit, not the flesh, and uh, renew my mind in the Word of God. Or renew my mind, rather. You look at verse 3 there, about we go in tribulations right now. And how do we do that? We do it with the Scriptures. You know, trouble will be productive in our life if we'll stick to the Word. If you'll stick to the Word of God, trouble will be productive. Because the Word of God will change you. I know when we lost Jeff, I studied, took, read for two solid hours every morning. 5 o'clock a.m. till 7. Every morning. And you know what? The Word of God changes you. But it'll be productive in your life. And that's why trouble will be productive in your life if we'll stick to the Word. You have trouble and you think, well, I can't go through it. You can go through it. If you'll strengthen your inner man. I do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's your inner man. That's not your outward man. Uh, also in verse 4 there it talks about experience. And patience experience and experience hope. You know what, what is that experience he's talking about? That's his skill in handling problems. Experience. You've got skill in handling problems. You've got the Word of God... I mean, you may go through a problem tomorrow, it may be completely different than whatever you've never had. When you've got the Word of God in you, you make the best choices that you possibly can going through that. And then if you go through, a, through another one that you've already been through, you've got experience with it, you've got skills in that there and handling those problems. But you use the Word of God to do it every time. You don't do it on your own. You've got learning... You know, as scriptures adjust our inner man, verse 4 there, and patience, experience, and experience, hope. That learning is going back to 15.4 there. I want you to compare before we quit. Romans 15.4, you've got learning. Look back to Ephesians 3.16. My main focus is realize that the Word of God gives you comfort. It'll give you strength in the inner man. You may not be able to hold your head up physically, but your inner man's up strong because you've let the Word of God give you comfort. Ephesians 3.16 and look at that verse. Paul says this, that He, that's the Father, would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. Notice that. Strengthened with might by His Spirit in, in the inner man. You you read First Thessalonians four eighteen. Comfort one another with these words. You know what a good definition of comfort is. Ephesians three sixteen. Read it again. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's comfort. If you want comfort, the definition is to be strengthened by his might by his spirit. In the inner man. Your inner man gets strengthened by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. That's the comfort. And I hope you see that. Does everybody see it or not? Somebody not? I mean, you think about the comfort and the definition of comfort is in Ephesians 3.16. To be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. You know, God's faithful to His Word. It doesn't fail. And Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 18, comfort is only as good as the Word. Well, the Word's pure. It's forever settled in heaven. It'll never deceive you. It'll never lie to you. It'll never forsake you. 
as long as you'll open it up and read it. It's always there for you. God the Holy Spirit's your teacher. He sealed you until the day of redemption. God the Holy Spirit's willing to teach you night and day if you'll spend that time in the Word of God. And He'll do that. He'll teach you. He'll change your life. He'll re you can renew that mind. You can re-educate yourself and, and learn. Whenever you go through something, comfort one another with these words, Paul said. Thessalonians, they were, they were concerned about loved ones that had passed on. And they were going through a lot of difficult times anyway with false doctrine around them. But the issue is God's Word never fails. It's going to stand alone. And comfort in times like we face today. We've got some serious problems in this world. And there's going to be more as they come. Comfort in the Scriptures gives all believers the capacity to, to deal with life. If you want to deal with life, get in the Word. If you want to throw up your hands and give up, stay out of the Word and you'll get in the flesh. But that's not the answer. The answer is the Word of God. Think on those things. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. That's important today.